dominant voice, you're like a cis, hetero, white dude, or just adjacent to that, do not wait until the end to call your consultants. Bring them in at the beginning, and instead of asking them, hey, is this very racist thing we did very racist, or is this deeply offensive? Hello and welcome back to Wish for Death Island, Population Me. Do you remember Feminist Frequency? If you don't, she was the face of those horrible videos this weirdo dumb dumb guy named Macintosh did who, who is now operating another dumb channel putting politics into everything and being weirdly fixated on women dominating him. Seriously, that TLJ video I saw I think EFAP talk about years ago really made me uncomfortable. What is with that guy? Anyways, ultimately the project failed. Anita Sneeze and Weezen went and joined something else and no one cares about them anymore. Despite their influence in certain high circles and their access to a lot of high places, it seems that they didn't have enough power to sneak their way into media in the way that they really wanted. But there's another group who did. Development, and you are part of like that dominant voice, you're like a cis hetero white dude or just adjacent to that. Do not wait until the end to call your consultants. Bring them in at the beginning, and instead of asking them, hey, is this very racist thing we did very racist, or is this deeply offensive thing we did deeply offensive, are you hurt by it? Ask them what they want to see, like ask them what would thrill them, what would bring them joy, and if you have a team lead, put that request to them very, very early. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups, and if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, Go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's gonna happen if they don't give you what you want. Because they have to consider, like I, I say that all out as a joke, but it's actually very, very true because if you start to consider the people who are player and audience facing and who have to deal with mitigating harm and with keeping the sentiment around their game and their project positive, there's like a genuine value that you can impress upon them. This is a group named Sweet Baby Inc, a name which you've probably heard of everywhere for the past couple months and it's important. Because these guys are feminist frequency but on drugs, and they have done everything that Anita had once wanted to do, and nightmarishly, they could do more, but I'm getting ahead of myself. First, before we start, I should tell you about some things. I haven't made a video in a while because I've been busy doing other things and being tired and I needed to recharge a bit, but I have come back with a bunch of content for you all at once, and most of it is free. First off, you know that thing I do with the cute vegetables, Tub Tub, my mascot, and his friends? I have assembled some cute art, comics, and whatnot into this thing called Tubbleson Chronicle Issue 1. Tubbleson Chronicle is this fictional newspaper magazine thing that I have in the setting for the vegetables where they live and it's sort of like an in-universe thing. It contains all these funny little things that they do, some articles, some funny recipes that I really wanted to share, plus some stories and art updates. Think of it as the island's official magazine, and you can view it free on my little retro-style NeoCities website, or you can download it for free from my shop in a PDF if you'd prefer. When I finally do my full manga project for Tub Tub Story, this will be included at the end of the first volume and there will be more of them included as well. Also, I've compiled a bunch of short stories of mine into a book. I wrote stories a lot when I was a kid and I always found myself giving up because of, you know, mental health and just not really having time. But recently I've decided to get back into it and uh, I have a lot of really weird dreams, <laughs> so I write them down and I ended up writing stories based on them and I put them into a book which I published on Amazon and it's because I talk a lot about other people's writing and it's not really fair if I keep doing that but I don't have something of my own to offer so that we can be on an even playing field. The only way to truly improve is to not only just look at other people's work but also have your own improve over time and that's what I want to do as well. Everyone gets nervous about showing their art to the public but it's the only real way to improve and that's what I want to do. I want that sort of rightful balance. It's cheap, it has my own illustrations, it has body horror, it has liminal spaces, and uh, check it out if you want. Okay, back to hell. You might have heard of the phrase diversity, equity, and inclusion, especially when it comes to people trying to have very f stilted and forced placements of political dialogue and ham-fisted characters appear in popular media. 
Imagine just going around in the world of a game and then you see some character that just feels out of place. They either have some white dude who is cartoony in their sexism or racism, maybe they're homophobic, maybe they're some weird parody of a real life politician that has absolutely no relevance to the plot of the game whatsoever. Maybe you've come across a brown or black character who makes everything about racism and oppression, who can't stop making comments that sound like Marvel was run through an AI generator. This last one in particular is a sore spot for me as one of the brown because I do not relate to that nonsense at all and I hate seeing this and being told that it's good for me. Also, this fear that I have that people will grow to hate characters that are my race being included in anything at all because they're all associated with being political hacks and not good characters so less and less of them will appear at all and I can understand why that would happen but it still makes me sad. But one of the common things that you might be thinking is why are they there? Where do these awful things come from and how do they get themselves inserted into these pieces of media? Are they just decided by someone in the game company and how did that person get there? Well, sometimes there's an outside source that comes in and does the job. Sweet Baby Inc. is one of those companies. They operate diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is also something known as DEI. They're the company that puts equity and woke shit into video games. They're feminist frequency, but instead of making shitty videos, they go into the back end of the operation and make game companies hire them for inserting propaganda. Like some sort of HR job thing, but way worse. They also boast having a lot of consultation jobs, and they have a lot of writers for hire to make stories more inclusive. They've been operating quietly since 2018, and I say quietly because it's as if they know that they're doing something shitty, something that most consumers really don't like, and so they feel the need to operate in secret to make the propaganda machine keep running as long as possible. If someone sees a horrible character in a game that spouts shitty, out-of-touch racial politics and ruins the entire experience, they can complain about this, but they don't know who to complain about if they blame the gaming company, sure, it's partially their fault for bowing down to such nonsense in the first place, but scrutiny on them won't stop the politics from happening in other places in a strikingly similar fashion, because the real culprit is never actually in public. They offer risk assessment and guilt companies into making them money by finding risks and problems absolutely everywhere. Risks that don't really exist until they come along and make one up. Then. They assess and sell the product that will fix the problem that they made up, which could definitely involve the face of the company making their own OC as part of some random game. There are actually places you can go online and see how many big and small projects that Sweet Baby and the companies like them have ruined with forced political dialogue and characters that feel like walking propaganda tools instead of proper, well-written representations of minorities. It's quite intimidating just how many things can get affected by this, but something interesting happened and the true nature of what was happening started to come to light. There's a Steam group you might have heard of called Sweet Baby Inc. Detected. It was basically a way for someone to compile games to avoid, to make a list of them, because those games had been touched by the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion or DEI business. These games had decreased in quality, according to the curator, because the process of game making in and of itself had been forced to include all of these political things that had nothing to do with the game, often by Sweet Baby or another company like it, because there's a lot of them. Then, the curator of the group presented this information to people who also wanted to see it so that they could avoid those games if they chose. There are thousands of groups like this for any other reason, any genre, either making lists to avoid these games or promote these games for a specific reason. That's why people make these groups. There's nothing particularly strange going on here, this is normal and you can just fucking ignore it. I'm sure there's a bunch of lists out there of people saying these games are shit and then it's a bunch of games that I like. I don't care. But Sweet Baby Inc. did care. Their employees tried to make the group delete. And when people found out about this, it became more of a Streisand effect. People started to join the group more and more and started digging and finding out that there is a company, several companies, that go around forcing horrible things into games and ruining it for everyone. And now it's a thing. 
Also, the group was made by a Brazilian, and these guys are pretending that it's made by a white person because, you know, the white devil and all. So that's kind of funny. These are also the same types of people who use the term Latinx, even though real Latinos actually hate it. <laughs> Demole pues. Latinx? These are the types who voice act for a shitty show that uses Latinos as a prop for diversity hire and doesn't respect them enough to get their language and dialect right or actually study their culture. And then when they get criticized for it, especially by the people whose culture they tried to steal and use as a puppet, they make this thing about how they, some Americans living a cushy lifestyle, actually know more about your culture than you do as someone who actually speaks the language. The Spanish language is not a Latin American language. It's a language the Spanish conquistadors forced upon Latin American people. The only reason we're Latin people and not Native American people is because of that distinction. So be mad at me all you want for misspelling words in Spanish. Be mad at me all you want for mispronouncing words in Spanish. That doesn't take away from the fact that I am a Mexican-American, Native American woman. Well, I'm not talking about anything in particular, am I? Woke game journalists and the usual suspects all went to defend Sweet Baby as soon as this stuff started happening. The Streisand effect continued to grow and people began to notice that someone criticizing your style and making their own personal choice avoid the type of work that you might be involved in isn't something that exactly warrants being banished from the internet or punished. It's kind of a bitch move to do that. And way more people started taking notice of the existence of Sweet Baby and their sneaky dealings with, it, with game companies. So now the secret was out, and people finally had someone to direct their anger at having the media they love slowly eroded by nonsense. This was something that idiots started calling Gamergate 2. If you don't know, Gamergate was originally this situation where consumers learned that journalists were in collusion with game companies, and basically lying about the quality of their games because of this connection. It's like someone taking a bribe from a food shop and then telling everyone they know about how amazing that food shop is. And then you get convinced and you go and buy food from there only to discover that the back of the shop has rats and they use expired ingredients. And then the person who runs the shop and the person involved who told you about how good the shop is start saying that it's your fault. Because the journalists didn't like the criticism on being found out so they started saying that everyone was actually racist and sexist and this was what it was all about. It was about white male anger and for some reason a lot of lefties on Twitter just can't get over it. They've been talking about it for what 10 years now and no one gives a shit anymore. Most people moved on but these people still think it's a big deal and it's all around them. Is the gamer gate in the room with us right now little guy? <laughs> Journalists were all lying that Sweet Baby does nothing but normal story consulting and there's no politics involved whatsoever, but that's clearly not the case because we have seen the stuff that they admit to doing. This is clearly just yet another example of, it's not happening, but if it did happen, it would totally be a good thing. These are the same people I mentioned hating earlier who say that a brown character has to be written like a propaganda mouthpiece and if you disagree, you're a bad person. And if you don't like it and you are also a brown person, you're stupid and you don't get to decide what your own representation should be like because you should get taught by someone else about how to be a better brown person. One of the reasons for that I hate a game like Forspoken, for example, is that the protagonist looks like me. I, I don't even know if the game is that bad because I've never played it, but my buddy Ragnarok sent me an image of the main character once in a conversation as a joke, and for an entire moment I genuinely thought that it was a picture of me and I got really confused about where I had taken this picture before I realized it was her. So uh, I brought her up because I was going to talk about how her writing style is retarded, but I actually really just hate her for that. I hate her for forever, no matter the context, even if she was written as a good character, I would still hate her because I thought that she had a picture of me. <laughs> I blame you, Ragnarok, you bastard. But I originally wanted to bring her up because I've seen clips of the same type of writing style and it seems like such a piece of shit thing to do. It's a horrible sense of humor that interrupts every single scene. The character never shuts up and I basically hate that those types of characters show up so often when I think that I found a character that's like a really cool brown character, you know what I mean? 
that shit doesn't even matter to me usually, I don't care about the race of the character, but it's just annoying when you see that sort of stuff and then it comes up and it turns out that it's like a sweet baby influence type of character and you just can't help but remember that all of this shit's going on and it's so annoying, it's so tiring. I don't know how I feel about the label Gamergate 2 either, because on one hand I feel like this sort of thing just happens all the time nowadays and it doesn't quite feel the same as the explosive way that Gamergate actually happened. I wasn't even around for that kind of thing on the internet and even going back to look at it, I can see how big it was. And it's also because woke journalists, like, like I said before, Gamergate never ended for them. They keep going on about it. So isn't this just a continuation of it, for them at least? It's just going to go on forever and ever. It's so tiring. The big cheese behind this company is a lady named Kim Belair or something or other and she was making retarded responses trying to damage control in the usual Anita fashion of old. She says that they only worked on a game being used as an example here, Suicide Squad, after the game was actually written, so any of the criticisms about the shitty characters and shitty writing style was not on her company, it wasn't their fault. However. This was a lie. And they want you to believe this because they're trying to minimize their involvement. Now that they're out in the open, it's probably easy to scrutinize everything they're doing. So if they outright lie and say that what they're doing is not what they're doing, it's like they're trying to hide again, essentially. It's like you're crazy for noticing the thing that they're very clearly doing, and you noticing is just you making a big deal of it. It's a classic gaslighting thing, and people have been doing this forever. They're trying to do all of the work in the background and they have a lot of power but they're acting like you as the consumer, you're bullying them or harassing them by just simply pointing out that you don't want to consume stuff like that. This sort of shit has happened with movies for a very very long time as well. It's what I like to call Schrodinger's bigot because you as the consumer switch power levels depending on what they want you to be. You're either a powerless little worm who they can stomp all over and have absolutely nothing to do with how successful their thing is and you can't stop them and they're so empowered, or you're a terrible, horrifying oppressor that is harassing them and going to cause them great mental harm because your simple criticism is actually like an act of violence, you know what I mean? You're either not supposed to watch Captain Marvel because you're a, a white male and it's not meant for you so you shouldn't watch it or talk about it, or you're a sexist racist because you didn't watch the movie when you should have watched the movie so it's your fault that the IP isn't doing well. But what does Kim Belair do to get her consultations? How does she get work? How does her company get all of these positions within different gaming companies? Well, she did a video explaining that. Or when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's gonna happen if they don't give you what you want. Because they have to consider, like I, I say that all out as a joke, but it's actually very, very true because if you start to consider the people who are player and audience facing and who have to deal with mitigating harm and with keeping the sentiment around their game and their project positive, there's like a genuine value that you can impress upon them with um, both ethically and financially. You can say this is- She has this talk about basically bullying your client into accepting your help and making changes for DEI, like you go up to them and you're like, well, you wouldn't want to be racist now, would you? You'd totally hire me because you don't want to be racist. What you, you don't want anyone to go around telling people that you're racist, right? That would really impact your bottom line and your reputation. You probably couldn't be able to find work after that if you were known as a racist. She also says sis, like sis, as if she's Wesker saying Chris, and I thought that was funny. This is a clip from 2019, by the way. Everyone in this journalist sphere is doing exactly what they did before and trying to censor people. This is not Gamergate 2, this is the same old shit that's been happening forever and they've always done it, they just do it more publicly now because no one got any sort of like repercussions from what happened. It all got exposed as being a big heap of bullshit in a cesspit and no one no one cares, you know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's still going downhill, it always has been. And they can just do it out in the open now because they know that even if people notice, well, what's gonna happen, you know? But these guys just, they, they're insane. 
They're even going after random streamers and other people for talking about them and openly trying to get people kicked offline and their livelihoods destroyed for just having a difference of opinion. There's an employee speaking as if he owns the company. And now I usually say this, individual employees shouldn't be shown as if they're speaking for the company itself. People have their own individual opinions and sometimes people say stuff and then you, you can't really control what they say and, and it shouldn't be pinned on you, you know what I mean? So I usually would not be saying that what this guy is saying is being endorsed by the company. However, this is pretty shady because this guy has done some pretty horrible things and said some very deranged things online. And now it is public enough that everyone has probably been spamming Sweet Baby about this saying, is this person really someone you want to have on your thing? And the company hasn't done anything about it, so I think they either don't care or they think he's doing a good thing. Now, you might think that sounds a bit strange, a bit like cancel culture, but here's the thing. That's, that's the point I'm going to bring up. People have gotten fired for less. People at random companies have said something completely innocuous and they've gotten so harassed over it that whoever they work for has fired them so that that company doesn't get harassed as well. And these people who are sweet baby type people are the ones who usually do that sort of harassment. So when it comes to someone who is acting very horribly and you're in a situation where the firing is actually warranted because it's actually disgusting behavior, they don't do the same thing. They say that they're allowed to do that, basically. But it's just usually the same sort of thing that happens. A bunch of Twitter freaks come out of the woodworks calling everyone isms and racists and all that kind of stuff. I don't understand why these people are frothing at the mouth so hard. Like, one of the examples is Asmongold, who I don't watch because I don't really watch big streamers, but he had a really reasonable take on the situation and seemed very level-headed about it. Despite being a guy that I only know of because I saw a photo once of blood stains on a bedroom wall where he apparently would wipe his nose when he had nosebleeds and that's fucking disgusting. But other than that, he was right about this shit. And people defending Sweet Baby went so fucking insane that they tried throwing these horrible allegations at him. They're just trying to spam him nonstop for just having an opinion. It really does seem that DEI is a religion. Because why are people acting like crackheads? So many people have hated a lot of games that came out recently and it showed that these games have had a tie to Sweet Baby. Some of the horrible things that people hate about the games tie in so exactly with the type of stuff that Sweet Baby offers on their websites. It just reminds me of localizers for anime and games not doing their fucking jobs because they think that they're better writers than the creators, when they weren't hired for that. If you are a better writer than the creator, you can do a side critique about what they're doing. You can talk about it on your own time and your own personal website or your own personal social media, but then you still need to go and do your job by translating directly what is being said and making it accurate to what is being said. Your job and your personal opinion are things that you have to manage like an adult. Please do your jobs. I can't tell you how many times that I've been watching an anime, looked at the subtitles and saw one thing was written down that a character supposedly said, and then I go to try and read or watch the thing without subtitles because I'm trying to improve my own Japanese, and I translate it to something totally different. And it's not just me being bad at Japanese. There are millions of fan translations of the same thing saying that the official localization was wrong. An example is in Kirby, Susie is a character who has returned for the game Star Allies and her lore, her description is the direct opposite in English of what it actually is in Japanese. The localizers are so stupid that they wrote the direct opposite of what they were supposed to do as part of their job. How do you do that? I don't understand. I mean, as someone who's autistically hyperfixated on Kirby, the lore is important to me, and to fuck up so badly in this way that you actually do the opposite of what you're supposed to, I don't, I don't get it. All of the employees of Sweet Baby Inc. are fucking ideologues. And Kim Whatsaface directly says that she wants to see herself and write about herself because she thinks it's cool, and if you don't like it, you're an ism. It sounds like something directly out of a 12 year old's first fan fiction when they just insert themselves making out with Draco Malfoy. As I mentioned before, I do like seeing different cultures on screen and I do like seeing my own culture on screen sometimes. I do like seeing well written minorities because they feel real, they feel like 
you know, people. I understand on the, the basis of saying that you like seeing the people look like you on screen. I usually don't give a shit about that stuff, but if I see a well-written character who has a similar background to me, I am going to like it. Because it seems kind of neat. It's like... I see when the game Dreadout came out, because you don't often see a lot of Indonesian horror, or you didn't at the time, a lot of Indonesian people were really excited because it was made by Indonesians, it had an accurate cultural thing because it had people who were natively from there who understood it, and loads of people on the internet from all of these other countries were talking about how cool the folklore was. And I feel like, you know, that, that's exciting. I think that that's awesome to feel that way and to see something that represents you in a good way. But do you know how crushing it would have been if Dreadout turned to be horrible and inaccurate and then people were citing it as if it represented Indonesia? That would have been terrible. Like, this is the sort of stuff that frustrates me. This woman doesn't want to that kind of dread out thing to happen. She wants to see herself on screen purely because she's a narcissist. She wants to put herself, her personality, her own views into these things that are completely unrelated to her, that aren't even her work. She doesn't want to just put a neat representation of culture that is accurate and, and something that people would find cool. These are the same people who think that it's totally fine to harass someone because they bought a funny wizard game. They think that it's perfectly fine to put you into the enemy camp and treat you like less than human because you point out nonsense that they do and how you personally don't like it. You could be the most uninvolved, harmless person just trying to have a good time and they want to pull you into the drama because they think that they're better than you and they're just obsessed with misery. The sweet baby site says that they offer sensitivity feedback, which is like when you bring your work to a bitch and they whine and say that it's too offensive and they use that as an excuse to replace your writing with their own. I distinctly remember Douglas Murray on Joe Rogan saying that he wrote some shit for like a gay magazine and a gay magazine sensitivity training person had to check to see if it was gay enough, even though Murray himself is a gay man. So sensitivity is when you're the wrong kind of gay, or the wrong kind of black, or the wrong kind of brown, because you have a different opinion, and you need a correct version of the gay or black to show you how to properly behave. Or a white person who thinks that they're allowed to speak for you, to tell you aggressively that you're not falling in line, and they're better th at being a minority than you are. It's, it's so frustrating. <laughs> they're basically saying that if you don't like your shitty writing, you must hate women. This is all what it's down to. What is the fallout of this situation exactly? Well, they locked their accounts on social media and said everyone was harassing them as the usual. Even though they go on record to say shit like they don't hire whites and they're openly racist, they still think that everyone else is the problem. However, I'm not totally just shitting on one side of the aisle here. The other side is equally as stupid and frustrating. Boomers. Boomers are saying games are dumb and they're all children's games and if you're enjoying something that boomers don't personally enjoy, you're a child and you shouldn't be doing that. Men aren't allowed to play video games because having fun is embarrassing or something. This is why a lot of conservative shock jocks and conservative media always falls flat and I say that as someone who has conservative opinions. I'm not trying to roast people and act like I'm cooler than everyone else. Because, yes, I, I definitely understand where they're coming from in some instances, but when they talk about media, it all just falls apart for some reason. Like, for example, Matt Walsh, I genuinely think that he has good takes sometimes. His What is a Woman documentary was actually pretty good, but when it comes to modern media like games, he is an absolute retard because he doesn't want to take the time to understand that people can have fun in a way that he personally doesn't have fun. He doesn't have to play games or engage with games in any way. I don't want him to if he doesn't want to, but just for God's sake, understand that it's a media form that you don't personally like, but if you put yourself in the perspective of someone who does like it, you can understand why it's a big deal to have that stuff ruined, especially if you just really engage with it because it's a good way to enjoy yourself after work or, you know, meet new people, make really good memories with your friends like it's it's just a hobby like everything else i don't understand why it's such a big deal that people can enjoy themselves playing a game 
A lot of people like Matt act like like you're a child if you enjoy this stuff. Just let people have fun. You don't have to be uptight all the time. But this is why this stuff doesn't really work. Like this is why it always seems like instead of things getting sorted out, it just seems like it's always going to be this constant thing where one side of the aisle is absolutely fucking up media and trampling all over it and not getting any sort of repercussions for the horrible things they do and then the other side is too busy arguing about absolute nonsense that doesn't matter and being childish and accusing other people of being children for enjoying things. It just seems like everyone is stupid, you know what I mean? Like another example, uh, the other day I saw Candace What's-Her-Face, another one of those, those types of people, doing the same sort of thing. She was saying that a video of Taylor Swift jumping around and being excited in an exciting football or some sort of sports ball game was horrible and, and stupid and oh my goodness this is terrible because she's an adult. Who cares? People like to jump around when they're ex excited. Have you ever been to a concert? Why? Why can't people see this? Now, why does this frustrate me? Because I talk about this all the time. We are also facing a crisis where adults want to behave like children and children want to behave like adults. And people think this is cute. It's not. This is not how 34 year old women behave. We don't come up with secret handshakes. We don't hip bump each other. That is childish. It is theatrical. It should never be seen. I have such an issue with this. It just makes me cringe every inch of my body. Every time I watch it, it makes me cringe. Let people have fun. I don't even like Taylor Swift at all. I don't like sports ball at all. I don't- I have zero interest in either of these things. But if someone is excited at, at an exciting event, they're gonna jump around with their friends. What is wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. You could be like 60 years old and you could just jump around with your friends at a, as, at a sports ball game if you really wanted to. I don't see why that's a problem. Like, Yes, there are things that children do that if an adult does them is embarrassing because you're supposed to grow out of that. But expressing the emotion of joy, th that's just a thing that you should be allowed to do as a human being. Can someone tell this woman that it is okay to have fun? Why are you people so fucking boring? One side of the aisle is complete psychos and the other side of the aisle is complete boomers. I don't get it. I just want to be in a place where I can be excited and have fun and make entertainment and not be stuck with freaks and woke people, but then also not have to try and figure it out on the other side where the other ones don't even get it because they're all boomers and they think that an interest that you have that they don't have must be for children and you should outgrow it. <sighs> I guess it's a Dwayne Johnson in a hard place all the way to hell, isn't it?